I'm very honored to be with a very distinguished congressional delegation that has traveled here to send a clear message to the world, America stands with Ukraine. We stand with Ukraine until victory is won. Do not be bullied by bullies. If they're making threats, you cannot back down. That's my view of it, that you, you were there for the fight. And you cannot, uh, you cannot fold to a bully. If he does anything in regards to unconventional we weapons, dealing with uh, anything like chemical weapons or any kind of strategical nukes, all bets are off. The speaker just said it. We're not going to back down to a bully. He's not going to be able to, you know, sometimes bullies keep talking. But if they cross, he's going to know he's going to have to face the consequences. He needs to know that. So there's no back sliding or backing up. That's not going to divide us. It will only bring us closer together to make sure that we repudiate him and stop his aggression. Good morning, everybody. It is around 10 o'clock, a little after 10 here in Bafos, Cyprus. You just saw the, uh, the Bafos castle right there in the distance, and it's right behind me right now. And I'm going to be walking over there, and we'll do a video. So uh, let's take a walk to the castle. And uh, you also saw the intro, the intro video, which featured Nancy Pelosi in, uh, in Poland. And she was giving a speech along with her Democrat Party delegation, including Shifty Schiff. He was also present. But uh, let's talk about Pelosi and we'll do an update as to what's going on in, uh, in Ukraine on the ground. I got some stuff to, uh, to report there. And uh, we'll wrap it up. Oh, we'll also uh, talk about uh, uh, Biden's speech at... Uh, at a Lockheed Martin uh, plant in Alabama, and then we'll wrap it up with a clown world, which of course has to do with Biden's speech in Alabama. And for that, I'm gonna have to play a video for that clown world. So let's first discuss, as we're walking to the castle, let's discuss the, uh, the trip from Pelosi to, uh, to Poland. She was in Kiev, she met with Zelensky, and then she went to Poland and she met with uh, the other day with President Andres Duda and uh, they discussed, of course, Ukraine. They discussed building up the NATO military presence in Poland. And I, I asked myself, the first question I asked myself is, why the hell is Nancy Pelosi running around Eastern Europe talking uh, NATO and military strategy. That's the first question I have. Her and Shifty Schiff and all the other Democrats that were with her. By the way, it's a really, really windy day, so let's uh, let's see how the audio turns out. I've got my mic. I've got my mic with the dead cat on it, so I think we'll be all right. Um, what did I want to say? Yeah, Nancy Pelosi. Her speech was really interesting, wasn't it? Um, and, and who was the other guy? I forgot the other guy that was speaking. I forgot his name. Let me know in the comments down below. But you notice when both of them were speaking, they were saying constantly, we, we, we. We are going to uh, give the strongest possible response to Russia, the strongest. They also said, we will not back down. We will not back down to bullies. We will respond in the strongest way possible. We will keep fighting until victory is won. That's the new mantra, I guess, until victory is won. Who, who is we? <laughs> I mean, um, every, everyone in America, please let me know. Is the U.S. in some sort of, uh, of alliance with Ukraine where if anything were to happen with Ukraine, then the United States has to, uh, has to come to Ukraine's aid? Like they have to get militarily involved? Is there some sort of alliance that I'm missing? because I, I don't think there's a, a formal alliance in place, one that has, a, has been approved by Congress or even by the president. 
I mean, is, is Ukraine part of NATO? No. Are they part of the EU? No. And so I keep on asking myself, what, what is this we thing? And the only thing I can think of is that they're preparing the collective West, the citizens of the collective West, Americans, Canada, Australians, Europeans, they're preparing us for, uh, for war, isn't it? I mean, they keep on saying we and we and we. <laughs> this, they're, they're, these are script writers that are feeding these, uh, these talking points to Pelosi. So the script writers at the, uh, at the Department of State, I imagine, the US government, they're, um, they're, they're using almost like a wordplay, hypnosis techniques. And <laughs> do you guys get what I mean? We, we and we. You know, they already prepped everyone for two months with, with social media and putting the Ukraine flag and I stand with, uh, with Ukraine and, and putting the flag on your profiles and all of this stuff. So they've already prepped the people there. And now they're just kind of not even talking about Russia fighting Ukraine. They're talking about we. We are fighting Ukraine. We're going to fight them till we get victory. We're going to respond in the strongest way possible. We will never back down to bullies. This is all leading to a very, very bad place. A very bad place. And uh, my hunch is telling me that when, uh, when the Alensky regime collapses, it's going to be uh, not, not so much U.S. military, though there will be U.S. and U.K. military there. I think they're going to put it on Poland, and they're going to put it on Romania, and they're going to put it on uh, Eastern Europe to go into Ukraine and fight the Russians, because the strategy right now is to weaken Russia with every single possible Ukrainian they can find, sending them into Donbass and, uh, and having the Russians grind them down and then sending more Ukrainians to Donbass and having the Russians grind them down. And their strategy is just to, to delay and to weaken the Russians. And so here's the castle right here. Let me pan the video so you can see. We'll go in, we'll take a quick walk in. And uh, so I just think to myself that this is, uh, this is all leading to a place where a wider conflict is becoming inevitable because the words they're using are very, very, uh, very unnerving, very unsettling. So that was Pelosi. Have, have all these people this entourage of Democrats, have they gone to the uh, southern border in this fashion? <laughs> I mean, have they all traveled to the southern border and said, we're going to, uh, to protect America's border? Like all of them, have they gone there and actually said, we are going to protect America's border? Because they're all running to, uh, to Ukraine, that's for sure. All of them. They're going to Kiev, then they're going to Poland. But I wonder if, if uh, a, a Democrat entourage like this has ever made its way to, uh, to Texas. To the border there and said you know we're going to uh we're going to protect america don't worry we're gonna we're gonna look after the american people i don't think so i do not think so so let me just fix the camera one sec all right so yeah um <laughs> what should we talk about before we go into the uh into the castle let's uh Let's shift gears and talk about the, uh, the ground war. Let's talk about what's going on. I'm going to read you a post from... Hold on a second here. Let me grab my phone. <laughs> All right. Let me read you something from uh, Jacob Dreisen. And uh, he came out with a new post the other day. And I think he describes what's going on perfectly. Now, yesterday... Uh, on the Duran, me and Alexander talked about how the Pentagon is saying that uh, that the Russians are bogged down, that the Russian um, operation in Donbass has fizzled out, that the Russians are very slow, that Ukraine is mounting a, a very good uh, um, counteroffensive, and and their defense is is slowing the Russians down. And the Pentagon seemed pretty happy. But Alexander, in that video, 
and go to the Duran, you'll see that video. It was yesterday's video. Alexander makes an excellent point. These were Pentagon officials speaking to um, speaking to Axios, and uh, and they said that uh, I was just getting a, an update from uh, from the news here. And, uh, and Alexander made a really good point. He said that uh, this was an Axios uh, interview with Pentagon officials, anonymous officials, and all they were speaking about with regards to Russia being slowed down, they were speaking in, in terms of, of just generalities. They, they weren't really specific about anything. And uh, I think that's an excellent point because when you look at how the Russians are reporting the war, the Russian Ministry of Defense, or even Russian uh, um, channels that are reporting on this, like Telegram channels or, or uh, alternative media channels, they're being very specific. You know, they're they're showing videos, they're showing photos, they're talking about specific places and battles, and and what was taken out, and how many tanks were involved, and the artillery that was used, and the missiles that were used. They're very specific, but you're getting these statements from the Pentagon, and they're just generalities. You know, Russia's war in the Donbass is slowing down. The Ukrainians are mounting a very good defensive around these areas, and, and they don't get very specific on things. And even the sources, or just anonymous sources in the Pentagon, are saying it doesn't feel right. It just doesn't feel right. It feels like the, the Pentagon is, is just kind of throwing out narrative talking points. They're getting information from the Ukraine Ministry of Defense. They're using their own uh, intel gathering, and they're just kind of putting together very broad talking points to fit the narrative that Russia is, uh, is, is losing, Ukraine is, uh, is doing a good job on the defense, but we got to get them more money and more weapons. All their narratives are framed so that they present the picture that if Ukraine just got another hundred javelins, if Ukraine just got another 10 billion, because look at the defense that they're putting up. That, that's how they're framing everything. They're not getting into specifics. And what we're seeing from Ukraine, if something is very specific, like we're getting specific news, it's just very small tactical wins. Like what happened in Belgorod with the uh, with the helicopter pilots, or you know they managed to get a drone through or a missile through and, and and hit something in Russian territory, or just recently, like just even a few hours ago, they they took out an oil depot, a missile hit an oil depot in uh, um, I think Mikhaevka, I think is the is the town in uh, Donetsk, really close to uh, to the center of Donetsk. And, and it's just like small tactical wins. Nothing, nothing big, nothing coordinated, nothing strategic. And I, I don't know, that's just the feeling that I'm getting as I'm, as I'm reading through everything. I think Alexander makes a really, really good point in that you're just really getting from the Pentagon very broad strokes of, uh, of a general sense of how Ukraine's doing. And, and those broad strokes are there to lead the... Uh, the public to believe that if Biden just approves this money and just approves this weapon delivery, this weapons delivery, then everything will be okay, and Ukraine will finally be able to uh, to go on the counter counter attack. It's just false. It's just false. Look, here is here's um, Jacob Dryden, and he, uh, I think he he paints a really really uh, good picture as to what's happening right now on the ground in Ukraine. Let me read it to you. This has to do with uh, Izium and Slavyansk front. And uh, the, the Dreisen report says this. For the last few weeks, the fronts in eastern Kharkov and the northern Donbass have been functionally merging, and now these areas cannot be viewed separately. As I've described previously, Russia's strategy differs greatly from the rapid advance, leave as many enemy behind as possible, days of late February and early March. It's now one of very slow, deliberate grinding down of Ukrainian forces through massed artillery, aerial bombing, ground and sea-based missile attacks, nighttime commando raids, and occasional tank raids against weakened positions. The Ukrainians bring up forces 
that get wasted, they bring up more get wasted and slowly Russia and the Donetsk forces further east move in. There is clearly no hurry to advance. The main goal is to wear out the Ukraine's human resources and then ultimately there will come a breaking point and everything will take care of itself. And this is the important part. Today, we may confidently say that the majority, perhaps sizable majority, of Ukrainian forces deployed to the northern sector with fighting primarily between Kharkov city and the Russian border and then Izium southeast to Yampol were not in uniform as of February. They are mobilized, inactive reservists, draftees, or in violation of their contracts, territorial defense militia. What this tells you is that the regular army has taken very substantial losses, likely including through desertion. I previously estimated that casualties in the northern sector since early April have been at least three to one in Russia's favor. I now believe it's more like four to one. It is telling that the Ukraine has failed to document even just one new Russian prisoner in the last few weeks, unless I missed something, but I don't miss much. Many Ukrainian bodies will never be recovered. For example, those hit directly with an Iskander tactical ballistic missile, of which Russia continues to shoot at least several per day, each and every day at Ukrainian sector command posts and platoon or company sized. Strong points. All right, that is from the, uh, the Dreisen report. That's the latest update. I will put a link for that down below. I, I think uh, Jacob Dreisen makes a, an incredible point there that we are now seeing more drafty reservists and just basically uh, uh, fighters who are not uh, professional military um, fighting this war now in Donbass. And I said yesterday that, uh, that the Alensky regime is just trying to get people um, even all the way to the west in Transcarpathia in the town of Kust. And the wives and the mothers were protesting and they're just getting anybody they can to just go to the Donbass and just to try and weaken Russia's military and slow down uh, Russia's uh, offensive in the Donbass. That is the goal, to weaken and slow down. And so the mantra holds that uh, NATO is going to fight Russia and they are fighting Russia to the very, very last Ukrainian. Literally, they are fighting Russia to the last Ukrainian. It is, it's sad and heartbreaking to see, but this is indeed the strategy. This is the strategy. So let's walk into the castle here. So this is uh, a Byzantine castle and it's uh, I'll give you, the, I'll give you the, the quick history in a minute. Okay, so um, it's a Byzantine castle, and uh, it was it was built to protect the port, obviously the port of Bafos, and uh, it was then taken over by the uh, Lucian. I hope my French accent is uh, is good, the Lucian, and uh, they then had the castle taken over, and it was destroyed by the Venetians. I believe, and then the Ottomans, they took it uh, from uh, the Venetians and they restored the castle in like 15, 1592, 1593, and pretty much what you see of the castle right now is pretty much what the Ottomans restored, 15, 1592. So this is pretty much uh, what it was like in, uh, in the 1590s when the Ottomans restored it. So, um, yeah, that's the, uh, this is one of the most famous, if not, if not the most famous uh, landmark in, uh, in Bafos. And it's right by the, the harbor and, 
and uh, all the all the restaurants and cafes and shops. So it's pretty it's pretty central to the to the to the city, the harbor area. And uh, let me walk up here real quick, and then we'll talk about uh, a little bit more about Ukraine, and we'll do our clown world. And uh, here we are, right here. It sits right on the. You can see where the castle sits. All right, so let's sit down here. And uh, so I was talking about the Dreisen report and uh, I, I think he's spot on. I think he does an excellent uh, breakdown as to what's really happening in Donbass. And uh, yeah, the Russians just, you, you know, that it goes back to what I was saying as we were walking up to the castle. The Russians are, are to, the, to the letter, they are demilitarizing Ukraine in, in the most, literal sense you know they're just more and more ukraine military aged men and reservists and draftees and then soldiers they're just all getting um either captured or annihilated by the russians i mean this is true demilitarization and uh, and the west's policy on this is just keep on sending more and more and eventually the russians are going to run out of gas and the russians are saying eventually the ukrainians are just going to run out of people I mean, that's, that's what's going on. That is exactly what is going on. The West is saying the Russians are going to run out of gas. That means I'm talking about money and, and, uh, and support for the war, morale, and, and all of these things. And, uh, and, and the West even believes that the Russians will run out of weapons as well. They believe that. But they're saying the Russians are just going to, they're just going to run out. They're, they can't last for much longer if we just keep on throwing more and more Ukrainians at them and more weapons at them. Who cares if the weapons work? It doesn't matter. Let's just throw whatever we have and eventually the Russians will just tire. And the Russians are saying, you know what, we're just going to grind down the Ukraine military uh, step by step, methodically, slowly, um, un until the Ukrainians run out of more people. But looking at Pelosi's speech and her trip to Poland, I believe the the collective West is saying when we run out of Ukrainians, we're going to throw uh, uh, Eastern Europeans into the into the mix. I really believe that's what they're probably thinking. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I just don't see them backing down. They said it. They're not going to back down. You heard the speeches from uh, Pelosi and her and her crew of uh, of goons. <laughs> they're, they're not going to back down. You know, they said there is no turning back. They said it. So what do you do when you run out of Ukrainian uh, um, men to throw, to throw at the Russians? What do you do? Well, you look to, uh, to the countries closest to, uh, to Ukraine. Romania, Poland, Eastern Europe. That's, that's, that's how I see it. But ho hopefully I'm wrong. So there was, uh, last night, big, big missile strikes all over Central and, uh, and West Ukraine, around 18 missile strikes, Lviv, uh, Vinitsia, all over, all over the West of, uh, of Ukraine. And uh, these missile strikes, they took out with absolute precision too, absolute precision. They took out uh, railway links once again, just to prevent the supply of, uh, of weapons from, uh, from west to east. They took out uh, ammo depots, fuel depots, and just basically uh, the Russians are, are breaking down um, the logistical lines from west to east of, uh, of Ukraine. So that was big. It was, uh, it was a big evening of, uh, of missile attacks in the center and the, uh, and the west of Ukraine. Actually, I think it was one of the, if not the largest, uh, missile strikes, missile strikes to take place in uh, in Lviv and in the west. So the Russians are are definitely they're turning turning things up a notch. So let's now go to Clown World, and uh, I'm going to have to play a video for this Clown World. But first, let's talk about Biden's speech, which is directly related to this Clown World. So Biden was in uh, in uh, a manufacturing facility in uh, Alabama, Lockheed Martin facility and he was giving a speech about the war 
in, uh, in Ukraine, and, it, and it's not even a war in Ukraine anymore. Biden is now openly calling this a war between uh, civilizations. And let me pull up some quotes from, uh, from Joe Biden here. Give me one second. So for Biden, he sees this conflict now as uh, being an inflection point. That's a quote, an inflection point in history. Biden described on Tuesday the conflict in Ukraine as a historic inflection point that comes along every six or eight generations. And he described the U.S.'s role in the conflict as fighting the first real battle in a civilizational struggle versus Russia and China. Biden also promised to send billions more dollars worth of aid to Kiev. Okay, no surprise there. Quote, we are at an inflection point in history. It comes along about every six or eight generations. Things are changing so rapidly that we have to be in control. That's a direct quote from Biden. Biden also said, there's an ongoing battle between autocracy and democracy. He was referring to China and Russia as enemies of supposed Western democracies. The conflict in Ukraine, he added, is the first real battle in this clash of civilizations. So, what was I saying throughout this whole video? They're, they're playing with words, I'm telling you. They're playing with words and they're trying to dupe us into, um, into a wider war, which is going to involve NATO, it's going to involve uh, the US, it's going to involve Europe, it's going to involve this new uh, Pacific NATO that Liz Truss is trying to put together, Australia, New Zealand. They're widening it out. It's not, it's not Russia anymore. It's, uh, it's China and Russia. And this is a civilizational battle. There, there he's right. This is a battle of civilizations. It's a battle between globalists and, uh, and countries that want out of the system. Real simple. It's about the globalists who want to keep the countries in the system. And it's about uh, countries that are saying no more. We want out. We're out. <laughs> that, is, that is the true battle. But of course, Biden is phrasing it in terms of democracies against autocracies. And uh, it's hard to believe is his democracy statement, given the fact, well, he did win with 81 million votes, didn't he? <laughs> and uh, given the fact that uh, they're extraditing Julian Assange to the U.S. without any real charges and uh, all the other things that the Biden White House is guilty of, which has nothing to do with, with democracy. They're trying to tear apart America's democracy and America's constitution. But he's throwing those talking points out there. And uh, let's get to our cloud world. <laughs> let's get to our cloud world and let's walk. Let's walk away from the, uh, the castle and let's get to our clown world. And uh, let me play some videos. Let me play two videos for this clown world segment. The first video is Biden talking about, well, actually both videos are about Biden talking uh, about uh, javelin missiles and U.S. weapons. The first video is, uh, is Biden mixing up Russia and Ukraine. You'll, you'll see what I mean there. He mixes up those words, Russian and Ukraine. But there's truth to what he's saying. There is truth. Let's walk up that way, actually. Let's walk to, to the end of the, of the pier here. So stick with me just for a couple more minutes so I can show you the, the very end of the pier. So yeah, uh, let me play the video. The first one is where Biden mixes up Russia and Ukraine. And the other one, I'm just not even going to tell you. I'm not even going to tell you what Biden says. Let's roll the videos. Before Russia attacked, we made sure Russia had javelins and other weapons to strengthen the defenses so Ukraine was ready for whatever happened. In fact, they've been so important. There's even a story about Ukrainian parents naming their children, not a joke, their newborn child, Javelin or Javelina, not a joke. Short videos, but wow, are they worth it. This is the guy that the, uh, the collective West is going to follow into a world war. This is the guy. <laughs> this is a disaster. This is a freaking disaster in the making for the collective West, I'm telling you. This guy is, is losing his, uh, his marbles. He's already, he's already lost his marbles. <laughs> I mean, my God. So, yeah, he, he mixes up Russia and Ukraine. But you know what? He's actually kind of correct. Um, 
Russia does have a lot of javelin missiles, and they do have a lot of U.S. weapons now. So he meant to say Ukraine, and he meant to talk about giving Ukraine more weapons, and Ukraine now has all these weapons. But uh, he, he mixed up uh, Ukraine and Russia. But he's right. Russia has a ton of javelins. They have a ton of U.S. weapons now. I think they have like the most, they have like the biggest inventory of javelin weapons, or like one of the biggest inventories of javelin weapons. By the way, Taiwan was supposed to get a bunch of howitzers, and uh, that's been scrapped because the U.S. just doesn't have any. They've sent them all to Ukraine, and they said that Taiwan is, isn't going to get any more howitzers till 2026. 2026. And the U.S. is going to have a hard time uh, making the howitzers because they have supply issues, probably because of the sanctions. But um, Taiwan is now scrambling to figure out how do we get our howitzers. I, thought, I think that's really interesting. So... Yeah, Biden, uh, Biden speaking truth. Russia does have a lot of weapons. Absolutely. And the best one, the icing on the cake, the cherry on top, was where Biden actually said that people are naming their kids Javelin and Javelina. Oh, my God. I can't take it. It is clown world. This is peak clown world. So we, were, we started all the way down there. We started down there and we walked all around and up right there. So uh, it is peak clown world. People are naming their, their kids Javelin and Javelina. <laughs> hey, how you doing? What's your name? I'm Javelina. <laughs> oh my God. When I saw that video, I, I like, I almost spit out my breakfast. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I was like, I can't believe this has happened. I can't believe we're following this guy, the Collective West, because I'm, I'm here. I'm in Greece. I can't believe that the Greek prime minister is listening to this bozo. I'm being dead honest. I can't believe that he actually listens to this guy. And even his team, even his puppeteers. I can't believe he listens to the people that puppet him. Because you have to ask yourself, the people that put Biden in, uh, as, as president of the U.S., they couldn't find anyone better to puppeteer. They found Biden and Harris. <laughs> I mean, my God. Then again, they put Zelensky in place as well. And, you know, he's pretty much a clown as well. So, but, uh, yeah, Javelin and Javelina. The interesting part about that statement is that Biden got that news from, uh, from some Ukraine officials. So Ukraine officials who were making up stories about the ghost of Kiev and all of this nonsense, they actually passed this on to the Biden White House. And the Biden White House, the script writers thought this was, uh, this was good enough to make his, uh, his speech at Lockheed Martin. That shows you how dumb Biden's script writers are, how clueless they are. They actually thought this was uh, an inspirational and smart talking point to put in the speech of a U.S. president of a U.S. president, they put this in the speech. <laughs> I think the Ukraine officials that are feeding the U.S. these junk stories, you know, Ghost of Kiev, Snake Island, Zaporozhye nuclear plant, um, we want Russia to capitulate, we're winning the war. I think these Ukraine officials are behind the scenes. They're probably just just laughing to a certain extent. They're like, I can't believe the Biden White House actually buys this stuff. <laughs> Javelin and Javelina. Oh, boy. All right. I'll wrap up the video there. Check out Alexander's channel, everybody. Check out uh, the Duran's channel. Alexander is just knocking it out of the park with his analysis. I mean, the guy's just on fire. And the Duran, well, we're putting together uh, as good as live shows as we possibly can. Um, and we're just trying to get the news out to you in, in the best way we can. Real quick, I just want to say one more thing, if you stuck with me for, uh, for this long. Um, Consortium News and Mint Press were, uh, were banned by PayPal. PayPal kicked them off, and uh, they're holding their funds. They're trying to confiscate their funds. We know what that's like. A year ago, PayPal did this to us. Um, support Consortium News, support Mint Press, just, you know, you just give them a shout out, maybe on their social media channels. I don't know what uh, what channels they have. I do know Consortium News does have a YouTube channel. I'm not sure about Twitter and the other social media, what they're using or what they're not, but 
show them some uh, some love. And uh, it sucks when PayPal targets you. If uh, Consortium News is listening to this or Mint Press, we've been there. And uh, just uh, just stay strong, guys, and just move on from it. Just keep on, always keep moving forward. And uh, it sucks when PayPal does this to uh, to customers, to clients, to partners, without even letting you know why or for what reason. Of course, it's, this has to do with Ukraine, no doubt about it. But you know, this is this is the democracy, the democracy versus autocracy. This is what Biden was talking about in his uh, Clash of Civilization speech at Lockheed Martin. Interesting that he makes a speech about the Clash of Civilizations at an MIC uh, factory, isn't it? Anyway, um, support Consortium News, support Mint Press. It sucks what's happening to them, but uh, it's just it's part of the part of uh, the business, part of what we do. So uh, I will leave it there, guys. TheDuran.locals.com. Take care.